Hey guys, uh, live recorded match. We're playing against Sand Dan Glockta. We're playing him on Dry Arabia. And I guess we'll see what what Civ he's playing here. Dry Arabia definitely lets us uh, play a pretty open. Pretty much any place that he's Ottomans. So. We're gonna get a big feudal rush, is what we're gonna get a big feudal push. So let's kind of commit into just scouting him out and um, just get to H2 as quick as we can and start producing units as fast as we can. Um, we'll probably start with this is not a good spawn. Our gold is so far away. So at least we'll be able to protect our Ubu. Um, which maybe in the long run is better for us because I do want to kind of go into a delayed trade <coughs> but I think he's been through here it's a lot of map not to, to find any <coughs> sheep <coughs> but I guess the one plus side is if we do go delayed trade and he hard goes up for our gold we should be able to to deal with it Ooh. Son of a bitch. That's huge. Um, that's a really big mistake on our part. <clears throat> nice. So what happens when I was too busy shift clicking over here and I wasn't looking at the mini map. We might be able to save these sheep. I don't. I don't know. Highly unlikely. So that's gonna really set us back on food, really bad. Hmm. And we don't know where any of our markets are, so it's a good thing we're not going for a trade boom, because uh, we wouldn't be able to really rally our, our uh, traders anyway. It looks like our age up is going to be a little bit delayed here. Because we messed up our build order as well. So just really good gameplay all around. One will go on gold, one will go on food, and two of you will come over here to build our... We'll probably build archery ranges first. Well, actually, you know, if you send spearmen early, we're not too worried about it. Then we're going for delayed trade, so we've got to protect our pocket gold. So we're going to drop a tower here first. We have enough gold. Horsemen are a little cheaper. No, I'm sure he's going to go full fetal aggression, so we'll drop uh, Mangadai first because that's a pretty big important mass that we can get out and we can also um, aggress him with that if he doesn't uh, commit. You know, typically they're going to go fetal push, but we have no scouting info, so he might actually, you know, we don't know if he's going to boom, you know, QTC play or something. I don't think he will, but um, if he does, we'll be ready for it.
Um, and then we don't have any food. So start collecting D over there. So just little things like like not getting your food right. It's crazy how much it affects your build order. But it does. It all affects. So um, we'll get this, and then I want to drop a tower here because if we get pushed right now, we'll be in a really bad spot. You're scouting us out here, so um, we're going to commit one villager into a tower here, just in case. Um, let's drop a uh, pasture, just so we can kind of start collecting there. Okay, yeah, so a little bit of a misclick by me there. Um, okay, let's come here. Let's check this all out. Let's come over here. Let's check around this backside. Okay, we're still producing here. We're okay. Still doing okay there. Um, I want one of you to come over here, drop another stable. He's on this gold. Okay, so actually it was a good thing that Who 
Okay, that's a really big cleanup. Come down over here. You guys will all come down over here. Let's rally our new forces over here. Actually, let's rally over here. <clears throat> we can probably go second TC now. But instead of doing that, let's go for a kind of really greedy trade boom. Eight here and back here. Um, okay, we're still doing okay there. It's a big investment. I mean, we're losing a pretty big investment as well, but I think we'll be okay. Um, Ubu is gone. So I'll take one of you. Let's go build this over here.
There's an army, so we're okay with that. You want to try to do something really sneaky, maybe not the best play, but um, I'm going to try to get away with it. Oh, 
We're gonna leave our forces here. I think that was a problem with the unit production there. Uh, they might be a little bit greedy going for
Plus, I do have this going over there behind the scenes. He hasn't noticed yet. We do need to get siege for these, um. Drop up there, grab here, drop up there, grab here, and drop up there. Everything goes well. We should be good there. Just make lots of horsemen here. Finish building that. Then I'd like to build... Um, where's my Ubu at? Ubu is still good, so I don't want to rebuild that yet. I want to build more uh, yeah, ranges. We actually want to shut down gold. That'd probably be the best move. <clears throat> and we need mangonels ASAP. What do I need for mangonel wood? Okay, we'll just wait. Easy burn down on this barrack. It's a full surround, so it's really big. Mangano shots way late, but at least they made it. Three over here, let's get these guys. Let's push up for raid presence. Okay, 
Get that going. Where do we have idols? I think it's for my food production. Let's move this over to here. Burn this. Free resources are always big. Um, we are pushing that back here. I'd like to build one more. Yeah, we're pushing that back here. We need a lot of knights out here. Okay. And then... We're going to send these guys over there. It's a really slow siege, we could probably apply pressure here.
Okay, that's a big, big cleanup. Cool. So yeah, against Ottomans, I guess I guess the big key that I'm starting to learn um, playing against them is get production buildings early and often. And I mean, we kind of messed up our. Well, we got some idols here. We kind of messed up our um, our resource gathering at the beginning with our con going down, which kind of made us transition to these deer, which I mean is in the long run good, but it, it really isn't. Um, we got how many burn downs on, on military schools? I think we got two, three burn downs on military schools, so that really helped keep that mass down. But I think the big thing was having two production buildings early immediately and then going up to four and that way we could always be producing units especially since we're producing cab if you're producing like foot archers or spearmen etc um you'll have a little bit of a better time dealing with uh the production uh, issue <clears throat> or with less buildings but um either way i think you're, you're in a pretty good spot if you produce and if you get two to four production buildings early and then just sending, like, these six villagers that we sent out, I'm not sure when we sent them out, at what time, but they've gathered over six, almost 6,000 gold on his side of the map. You know, just kind of a sneaky little thing. You know, he was denying his gold everywhere. He was denying our trade line, and we just pulled six vills. And over the time of this match, they've, they've pulled 6,000 resources. So um, it's really big to be able to um, to to try to find little, little pockets where you, you might be able to... Um, get some resources he dropped a, a keep on the side here i think he knew well i, I guess he, he probably could feel the pressure coming in in terms of the army pressure here um what did he have here these all janissaries basically yeah these are a lot of janissaries i mean janissaries aren't bad but they have against cav they're like they're really good against cav but they just have super low range they're less than manga die and if manga die got bad range three and a half janissaries i think have three no they're also three and a half okay so they are the same um, but either way, they couldn't, I mean, Mangadai are okay with their short range because you can, uh, you can at least be mobile with them. The problem with the Janissary is you can't really be mobile with them, so, I don't know, I don't really like the Janissary play because they're so clumped, like, once you get hit with mangoes, they just get super, um, they can be super countered. Um, those two springles that we incorporated into our siege was really a good idea. Um, once he had those mangonels in, that could have really shut down our play. Um, and once we had a curl time, we tried setting up earlier, and we fell back, which was, like, was a good move. Also, while he was pushing us here, we kept um, keeping pressure on the back of his base, burning down military school, burning down military production, so that basically his army that he had here was what he had to kind of take down our base, and he wasn't going to be able to do it, so... We dropped a bunch of towers. We lost, what, two towers, a couple of production buildings. So it wasn't too bad, especially since while he was pushing us, we were dropping stables at front. And speaking of which, um, if we had done this earlier, if he had dropped these stables a little bit earlier, when, when, when he was pushing us here, I'm pretty sure we had the wood to do it and we weren't doing it. That's a little bit of a mistake. Is let's just grab a couple of villagers and start dropping some production down here to be able to counter that. And since that was all horsemen and archers, it was just, just mass horsemen and we would have been fine. So... I mean, we were okay, but I, th I think we lost more than we needed to because of our um, uh, our macro play there. So overall, pretty good game. Um, total unit count. You can see that we were behind for a little bit. It's that feudal, that feudal timing. It gets rough, but it's also because we're going um, cavalry, and if you go infantry, your your numbers will be a little bit closer. This is that push here. I'm pretty sure where he killed a bunch of us, our villagers out on those towers. And then he pushed our base. And I don't think we lost any villagers when he pushed our base itself. He just when he, when he pushed our towers, we lost some villagers. But you can see we had little dips in his eco. And these little dips are, you know, villager kills, but they're also repositioning in idle time. So that's something. I guess we'll probably see in the eco count. Eco count. That's where we lost a lot of traders too. Total resources count. So right around here. And that kept him kind of low. Yeah, he stayed pretty low throughout. Mm, at the end there, we definitely a little bit higher. 
and the villager count. We were lower on veils, but we also had traders that weren't being um, accounted for here. And him going to TC was probably a smart play, um, especially considering he used so much um, stone into his military schools that he lost. Here, you know, he kind of had a better army than us. But we started to ramp up our army pretty good. And the big thing is we were taking good fights. Like, his, a lot of his army was this big archer mass, which was getting shredded by the, the horsemen. So, overall, good match. Um, I think that's kind of the, the play against the Ottomans, is just make sure you have plenty of production buildings to, to be able to defend your eco properly and get some raids. And if you can if you can take down that a military school, that's, that's huge early. So, um, thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you on the next one.